Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Eclipsing Non-Binary and my pronouns are they, them. Welcome to my first ever astronomy video. Today I'm going to cover what's in the sky this month and what I would like to call <laughs> In this video, I will cover how to view all the planets and the constellations in the Northern Hemisphere during the month of September in 2021. Fall approaches, which means earlier sunsets and longer nights. The autumnal equinox is on September 22nd this year at 7.21 p.m. Universal Coordinated Time. This occurs when the sun is directly over the Earth's equator, giving us equal lengths of day and night. The month starts off with the moon in a waning crescent phase, heading towards the new moon on September 7th and increasing in size and brightness until it peaks at the full moon on the 20th. This month's full moon is called the harvest moon. The moon will be at perigee on September 11th when it's at its closest distance to Earth and at apogee on September 26th when it's at its furthest distance. Mercury and Mars will be up in daytime and much too close to the sun to see. Mars is currently making its way around the far side of the sun and over to the morning sky. Mercury will be at its greatest elongation east of the sun on the 13th and will begin a retrograde path on the 27th as it heads westward. Venus can be seen above the southwestern horizon in the evening sky in Virgo and will have migrated into Libra by the end of the month. Try to catch a view of it after sunset but before 8.30 p.m. when it starts to go out of view. Jupiter and Saturn are now up at sunset. Jupiter and Saturn are both in Capricornus, viewable in the southeastern sky during the night. However, as both are very far south, will disappear from view not long after midnight. You'll be able to view both planets in the evening until after the start of 2022. If you stay up later, you can catch views of both ice giants with binoculars or a telescope. Uranus will rise around 9 p.m. and can be spotted in the constellation Aries and Neptune rises at about 7 p.m. and can be seen in Aquarius. Neptune will be at opposition on the 14th, when it will be at its closest and brightest for the year. It will be seen with a wide aperture telescope. However, you can catch it with a good pair of binoculars if you know where to look. Neptune will be seen between Aquarius and Pisces on the 14th, which are two very faint constellations. If you can find the two faint stars Anka and Hydor, then draw an imaginary line from Anka to Hydor and extend that line to about twice the length, you can find Neptune in that area. You may have to fish around until you see it. Neptune will look like a tiny blue dot in the eyepiece, just barely distinguishable from the stars around it. In the evenings, we will be losing the spring sky early on after sunset, however the summer constellations remain high in the sky and the fall constellations can be seen rising in the east. If you stay up late enough, you can get a total view of the fall sky and even start to see the winter constellations rise early in the morning. In the western sky, we can see the last of the spring sky with the constellation Hercules. Hercules can be found by looking for the keystone, which is the trapezoid shape that makes up his body. We can also find the popular Messier 13, a bright globular cluster found right in the keystone. To the south, we can see the ecliptic, or the line that the sun travels along in its path across the sky. Here we can see our zodiac as well as the planets. From west to east, we have Capricornus, where Jupiter and Saturn are both easily viewable, Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, and finally Taurus the Bull. Since Capricorn and Aquarius are both very faint constellations, chances are you'll see Jupiter and Saturn, but struggle to see the constellations therein. If you're up earlier in the evening, you might catch a glimpse of Scorpius and Sagittarius setting just after sunset. And if you wake up early in the morning, you might catch a view of Gemini, Cancer, and even Leo right before the sun rises. Directly overhead for most of the night, you'll see the main attraction of the summer sky in the form of the Summer Triangle. The Summer Triangle consists of three bright stars, all in different constellations. First we have Vega the brightest star in Lyra the Harp, and the fifth brightest star overall. This is where Jodie Foster visited back in 1997. I am okay to go! Vega is home to the Ring Nebula, or Messier 57. Next up we have Deneb, the brightest star in Cygnus the Swan. Here we can see its wings spread out and its long neck. 
<laughs> the swan looks like it is flying through the Milky Way. Also part of Cygnus, we have Alberio right here, which is a binary star in which each of the stars is a different color. One hot blue star and one cool red colored star. The third star in the summer triangle is Altair, the brightest star in Aquila the Eagle. The way I see it though, I think it looks like a manta ray. Some other small, fainter constellations can also be seen high in the sky in the summer. We have Vulpecula, the fire-type Pokemon, I mean the fox, Sagitta, the arrow, Equilus, the horse, and Lacerda, the lizard. Farther north and east, all of the fall sky has risen by midnight. The bulk of the fall sky is made up of characters from the movie The Clash of the Titans, Release the Kraken, such as Perseus, Andromeda, and Pegasus. First, we have Cassiopeia and Cepheus, the king and queen. Cassiopeia looks like an M, and Cepheus looks like a house I drew in kindergarten. Their daughter, Andromeda, is a stick figure, drawn to fit the standard society has for today's women. Andromeda is seen riding Pegasus, the winged horse, and also the main character in Disney's Hercules. Pegasus' brightest stars form a square, also known as the Great Square of Pegasus. Down here, we have Andromeda's wholesome boyfriend, Perseus. This bright star here is called Al Ghul, which is known as the Demon Star. Every three days, Al Ghul actually disappears from view, but worry not. It's an eclipsing binary star. One star is significantly fainter and larger than the other, and when it passes in front of the brighter star, Al Ghul all but disappears. Here we have Cetus, the whale, which attacks the home of Cepheus, Cassiopeia, and Andromeda. Lastly, we have our northernmost constellations, Ursa Minor, Draco, and Camelopardalis. Ursa Minor is the little bear, baby of Ursa Major, which is so far north it will not be viewable for most people as it lies right on the horizon at this time. Ursa Minor is also known as the Little Dipper, and at the end of the handle we can find our north star, Polaris. Draco, the dragon, can be seen winding between the two bears. Last, and definitely least, because it's extremely faint to see, is Camelopardalis. Without looking it up, I want you to comment below what animal you think a Camelopardalis is. That's all the time I have for this month's Stargazers update. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more astronomy content.